So with those sorts of uh, introductory remarks, I'm going to step through this uh, slide program really quick. I think everybody can see the slide. There's lo lots of screens, and I think they're coming over DCO as well. So what we'll do, Tom, is go to the next slide. Okay. So uh, so this is it. This uh, Tang thing you'll see many times. Tactical advancements for the next generation. That's kind of our uh, innovative uh, group. And uh, this Tang is also, uh, it's a sort of a play on words. The USS Tang was a very famous uh, World War II submarine. Okay, next slide. Okay, so it's important for us to remember that we do not, like I said, it's not like a blank slate. We have fiscal constraints and we have physical constraints. So this is our form factor, right? It's not gonna get any bigger than that. That's an SSGN, it's a convergent trident hull for my business. And again, this is kind of our submarine force journey and, and, and I hope it has applicability to you. That's it, right? If it's bigger than that, I can't use it. If it doesn't fit down that hatch, generally I can't use it, right? Otherwise I gotta cut a hole in the hull. So there are some constraints on what we need to do and we need to keep those in mind, both fiscal and physical. All right, next slide. The, our challenge was that the complexity is, com is increasing, but our form factor is not. Our things are not, our submarines are not getting bigger. We are not getting more people. In fact, it's probably trending the other way. Okay, and this is just the world. It would be great if you could say, simplify it, but the enemy and the world gets a vote, and this is just the facts of our life. So uh, we'll step through this in a little bit. Next slide. Okay, we're getting more missions. Anybody here seeing missions go away in their world? Back here, do you see missions go away? Yeah, so throttling back, that's due to, uh, to like fuel and fiscal types of things or? Yeah, okay. How many have seen kind of more missions coming onto their plate? You know, for a given platform, right? Service guys are now into ballistic missile defense. That's a new thing. You know, every one of us, I think, is, uh, I think the general trend is that more of us are seeing more missions on the same team, the same platform. And so that's, you know, that's been a trend that we've uh, seen in the submarine force too. All right, next. More sensors. This is kind of a, a diagram of a Virginia class submarine and really that thing is just a monstrous sensor platform moving through the water. The skin of the ship is a sensor, every mast is a sensor, there are just, uh, the thing is a gigantic listening post and uh, processing post, okay? And so more and more data being sensed in more and more missions which leads to, next slide, kind of more information being processed. All right, and this burden falls on you, the operators, who have to kind of manage all of that information and come up with a solution to a problem. And so uh, what, we're, what we find in, in our control rooms is that uh, you know, we, we've got some officers who have to just walk around control and they're looking at different screens, different displays, and they're integrating all the different pieces of the picture that those things uh, provide, but they're integrating it in their head, okay? And we're striving for a, some kind of a display that integrates it on a screen and allows him to free his mind, free her mind from that integration burden and they can make decisions on the information rather than processing integration. One area where this is uh, really, if you do some uh, research and you look back at World War II and before, in the area of uh, aircraft uh, fighting aces. And uh, same with the submarine force, submarine aces, the guys that could go out and do a lot, sink a lot of ships. What we find is that there were very, very few guys in, the, uh, in naval aviation and in uh, the submarine force who could put that three-dimensional picture together in their head and shoot a lot of aircraft down, right? So if you look at sort of a histogram of, you know, how many people, how, what percentage of the pilots were killing the most aircraft, percentage of the submarine commanders who were sinking the most ships, we found that it was like the top 10% of the commanders were sinking 70% of the ships, right? It was a very, very small population who could really stitch all that together 
and put the weapon onto the target in real time. One revolution that's changed all that is guided weapons. Okay? So that's a revolution I think that we're dealing with right now. Precision munitions has taken that burden away from those gifted people who had 10,000 hours of three-dimensional problem solving and could shoot down an aircraft. And now, between sensors, precision weapons, and range, you've got this entire new, very effective network that's being born that's just given birth to all of this anti-access area denial stuff. But that is a revolution. When I can shoot a weapon and uh, hit a moving ship 1,500 miles away, that's a game changer, right? So that's, that's putting the burden on, on the force. Okay, next. Another thing that we have to keep in mind, just as, like, just as we are, uh, must be mindful of security, we also must be mindful that uh, we've got to be reliable. And it's, you know, we play a high stakes game. Lives are at stake. And it's tremendously costly when we uh, make a mistake. And so these are just two pictures of uh, the USS Hartford. You know, I'll tell you that she, she collided in the uh, Persian Gulf and with the uh, San Diego, and uh, that was a disaster for the Navy, right? And all of the information was on that submarine at the time to prevent that collision. It just did not get prioritized into the decision maker, and the submarine kind of came to the uh, periscope depth right in front of the, uh, the uh, ship. And then the other uh, bigger picture is the bow of USS San Francisco after she hit a seamount uh, submerged at pretty much full speed. I mean, she was going to head flank, you know, greater than 25 knots submerged, 7,000 tons goes from 25 knots to zero almost instantaneously, okay? And so uh, that was huge, and you can see the, the front of the uh, ship was torn up completely. Very lucky we got that ship back uh, you know, in one piece. The other uh, way from that collision is, you know, we've been using a commercial off-the-shelf technology in most of our systems for a long time, right, COTS. And uh, so we use the same displays that you can buy in Best Buy or some of the, you know, right? And uh, there's been a lot of sort of angst out there about how rugged these systems were. And every system on that uh, San Francisco, when she went, you know, from a head, when she smacked into that seawall, all of those cot systems hung in there and were fine. The only one that was broken was the one where uh, the ship hit so violently that the, uh, at the time, there was an officer briefing the captain in his uh, chair in the, in the wardroom. That officer was launched forward into the, in the wardroom and literally smashed into this big screen display at the front of the wardroom, and that's the only display that broke from the collision between the uh, supply officer and the uh, display. Every other one was fine, so these things are uh, outperforming our expectations. But we operate in a high-stakes game. We can't be on the leading, bleeding edge of technology. We're one or two generations back where it's very, very, uh, where it's, it's more reliable. Okay, next. So we're uh, concentrating on information technology. Let me just sort of point out this slide a little bit. On the upper right-hand corner for the next few slides, we're just going to see a timeline unfold. And this effort, uh, this tanking effort, began in May of 11, okay? So we're talking last year, and where we got the idea to uh, hold this conference. So we got together a bunch of, uh, of uh, people to kind of map out our way forward. And if you go to the next slide, what I want to show you is a uh, quick video put out by Corning which served as kind of an inspiration point. And the CEO of Corning approached us and asked us if we wanted to do business with them. So I'll just give you a chance to watch this. <laughs> 